Hi everyone, I just wanted to do a short video this week going over the PowerPoint slide with you. Um, I realize that some of the PowerPoints, I just have key, uh, keynotes listed, but nothing really to support them. So I'm going to go through these PowerPoints pretty quickly. This video should be hopefully less than 10 minutes for you to sit through. Um, I'm also going to post the PowerPoint slides um, as an embedded um, slideshow through my SkyDrive as well, and I'll put those on web courses too. So desktop publishing and single sourcing is the first one that I'm going to go through. This is the lecture you should be looking at for a Monday. Um, so I'm going to go quickly over Quark, Adobe InDesign, and FrameMaker. Uh, there's another one that I'll also introduce to us too, and we'll get to those. So there's some commonalities between all of these. Uh, there's kind of a medium learning curve. Whenever you're looking at a desktop publishing, um, there's going to be a lot of different interfaces to them, but they all act pretty much the same. They allow you to manipulate both graphics and text on, this, on the page and also the size of the page that you want to create. So something else that's common is that they have manipulable interfaces. So if you're a novice, you can have a novice looking interface, which isn't going to give you a lot of buttons in order to um, manipulate stuff. But otherwise, if you have an expert, you might have an expert design palette, and that's going to give you a lot of different functionality that you might not be um, familiar with if you were a novice. Uh, that also goes to customizable settings, so you can put it as a setting for a novice, otherwise you can put it as a setting for an expert. Uh, they're all going to have scalable pages, which means that you can create a page that's very, very small, a page that's very, very extremely big, up to like a poster size. Um, they're all going to make use of styles, and styles is something that we'll get into more later in the semester when we're discussing Microsoft Word in a few weeks here. Um, a lot of the styles are based on cascading style sheets, also known as CSS. Um, cascading, cascading style sheets are pretty familiar if you're familiar with like HTML and document design. Uh, what they do is each heading is created and it has, you know, a certain feature like the font is for heading one is 32 point Times New Roman. Then you get to heading number two which is going to be a smaller heading or a subheading, and that one's going to be a font size of 16, also in times, etc. If you look at my instruction manual that I posted for you guys' instruction manuals, um, you will see how I use headings and styles in that. Additionally, all of them are going to have grid lines. Grid lines make it easier for you to line up elements on the page, and they're also going to be easy to insert graphics into. So the first one I wanted to talk about quickly was Quark. Um, I'm not too experienced with Quark, and actually I do have Quark Express on my desktop. Uh, that's a screenshot from my laptop here. Um, what I want to say about Quark is, well, I'll just give you, a, like this is the, the, the screen to start um, a new layout. So you can change the width and height of the page. You can also change the margins of the top and the bottom and the right. Um, it's pretty pretty laid out when you want to start it up. So this is what it looks like. Um, as you can see, there is no tools highlighted that I have open right now. But I just wrote on here, this is some text. I'll show you how I manipulated that. So you can change the, the slant of the text as well. Um, basically, all of these desktop publishing tools are going to look like a blank page. And then you just add your graphics and your effects to the top of it. Adobe InDesign works pretty much the same way. Um, this is an instruction manual I made for when I created a Lego project <laughs> and I wanted uh, users to be able to go ahead and go through creating this Lego st structure here. Um, so as you can see, what's nice about this Adobe InDesign and, and all of these is that it's easy to line up all your graphics so right here, as you can see, this edge of the line for these different toys are all lined up. Same thing horizontal or vertically with um, the numbers here with the X's. So everything becomes very standard and very line upable. Um, what what I do to do that is I'll turn on my grids, and so with grids I can I can line up everything the way that it's supposed to be. Uh, another common tool that you'll find as a technical communicator is FrameMaker. I am not that familiar with FrameMaker and it is kind of a little bit outdated. I don't think people are using this as much, but it works in similar fashion as um, 
as does uh, uh, InDesign here. Something else that I wanted to bring up was single sourcing. So let me open this quick. I'm going to post a link to this slideshow as well, but it'll tell us you know, a little bit about uh, how to implement single sourcing and what single sourcing is exactly. Um, I'm just going to briefly explain what single sourcing is. Single sourcing is the idea that uh, in many different documents you're going to have the same information that gets used throughout a corporation. So what you do is you load that chunk or that paragraph that explains how to do something into an XML database. And then each time that a technical communicator needs to use that same information, they will just use, they will, um, use the single sourced paragraph and they'll pull it into a new document. This way you don't have to rewrite instructions for things that have already been written previously. Um, it's, it works a lot like the fashion of tagging. So you can create a chunked piece of information right, that explains how to do something in a corporation. You can tag that information. Um, with the elements that it is. So let's say, for example, I was writing a little chunk on that Lego instructions before. And I said, this piece, or these Legos are for uh, adolescents that are five years old and older, or something like that. Well, then I could pump, put that in my XML database and I could take it with choking hazard, um, five years plus, Lego, all the different type of information that I would need to find it again in order to pull that back into my document um, in order to keep it single source. Once again, I'll post the link to this uh, PowerPoint in the, in the course as well so that you guys can take a look at that. Some other desktop publishing um, is Microsoft Publisher. Um, I'm not too familiar with Microsoft Publisher. I've never used it. But for the instruction manuals, you guys can feel free to use Microsoft Word if that's what you're comfortable in. Um, I would push you to use something that's easier to manipulate images and graphics and line things up in better than Microsoft Publisher or than Microsoft Word, but uh, I'll leave that up to you. Um, I do have a friend right now who's working for Medtronic as a technical writer, and she says that what they're using right now is the Passant system. I'm new, not too uh, familiar with this, but I just wanted to throw it in there because I know that people are now using this system as well. So if you are interested in Vassant, you can um, look them up, go through their website, and they'll tell you more about it.